All right, everyone. Before we begin, we'd like to observe a minute of silence and tribute to our national artist Arturo Luz and Prof. Leo Abaya of College of Fine Arts who recently passed away. All right, with spirits of great artists guiding us and starting us with the, for this session, we'd like to welcome you all to the last installment of Art and Art Making in the Time of COVID series, where we aim to explore the nuances of contemporary art during these unprecedented times. This event is organized by students of University of the Philippines Diliman Art Studies 140 Contemporary Art Class under Professor Flaudet Meida Tuin. My name is Elke Rigor, and I will be one of your co-hosts today. Well, one of my hosts will be Miguel Ragaza, who will be introducing our speaker in a while. So before we get started, we'll just lay down a few reminders to ensure a smooth flowing session. So first, this meeting is recorded for documentation purposes. The recording will be posted after in the Art Study CP Diliman YouTube channel. We'll also have everyone on mute except the hosts and speakers to avoid background noises that may distract you from listening to the webinar. And if you have any questions during the presentation, please submit them over Slido and we will address them in the Q&A session later. All right, to formally introduce our speaker, I'll hand over the virtual mic to Miguel. I hope you're all excited to hear from our speaker today. Rocky Kahigan is a multimedia artist from Bontoc Mountain Province. In 2016, he was awarded the Ateneo Art Awards Fernando Zobel Prizes for Visual Art for his solo show Museumified, which featured assemblage pieces and sculptures made up of found objects and artifacts from the Cordilleras. In his paintings, installations, and assemblages, Rocky Kahigan explores material culture, indigeneity, and museology as entanglements in or possibilities for decolonization. His work is largely focused on identity questions and the transitioning of and decolonization in indigenous cultures. He answers questions such as, what does it mean to be indigenous now? Rocky constantly reimagines his personal history as part of an indigenous community. He examines the privileges dangers, and insecurities it holds in the formation of an identity in a place and present where decolonization is often co-opted by capital experienced as hegemony, finance, and center. Since 2011, Kahigan has been a part of Access Art Project, a nonprofit artist collective focused on programming events 
that study access to contemporary art in communities and interdisciplinary culture research in the Cordillera region. Through his works and personal projects, Rocky aims to evoke the complexity of culture and social life that spills beyond the gallery space. Rocky Kahigan will share his experiences and insights on conceptualizing and producing artworks in our talk today. He will discuss his artistic process in the creation of his works, such as Ration series, which remain relevant to ethnographic research, national identity, and indigenous communities in the Philippines. His works have already been exhibited in various countries, particularly Philippines, Taiwan, and Nepal. So let's not delay this any further. Let's all welcome Rocky Kahigan. The floor is all yours, sponsor. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you, Miguel, LK, and thank you, Professor Ming Datin, for inviting me. We'll start the presentation with um, a video that's part of a series of short studio visits um, that was slated as part of the recently con a recently concluded art fair. So, LK. Okay, I'll be sharing my screen again to, so, okay. to play the video. Wow, hair din ba to? Wow. Ano yung pinakamahaba mong hair na nakuha? May ganun ka ba? I wasn't measuring. Ganda nang parang mga crochet. Di ba meron na si Ina? Di ba ganda na? Yung gumagawa ng hair na earrings mo. Ako ng new hair for you. You did not prepare me for this interview. Wow, ang dami. Saan ako ha yung... These are hairs from Bontok. Oh, iba-ibang age? Yes. Yan yung mga blondes, mga book ng millennial. So, ikaw ba, uh, meron ka ng, dahil ang dami mo na nahawakang buhok? Oh, yeah! Meron ka ng mga prefer, preference? Um, yeah, mga ano. Anong klase? Yung medyo smooth. Mm. Kasi, mm. mahirap siyang. Kaya ako merong comb. Okay. Para, yung mga, para sa mga ganitong, Yung ma mga matagal nang nagupit. So, naging ano na siya. Naging mga ganyan, magulo. So, kailangan mo siyang isuklay to, to smoothen. Ayan. Para, para maging ganyan siya. Tapos, galing lang din siya sa isang, ito yung, galing siya sa isang uh, partner. O, oh, isang partner lang. Tinipon din yun ng 
yan yung pangalawang box. Tapos pinakuha ko sa pinsan ko kasi pandemic. Mm-hmm. Mostly girls, boys. Feeling ko, feeling ko mostly girls kasi hindi naman nag Hindi. Tapos feeling ko din, baka hindi rin naman lahat ng to. Baka mga cream students. Ha? Bullies? Oo. Mga cream biology students. Hmm. Oh God, it's a UC. <laughs> so one talk. One talk meron ba? Sa FPSPC, oo. You know there was a, a new day. Uh, yun yung ano. Pinaka, ano na course doon. Pinaka sikat. Iba ano, ako sa ibang hair. Lalo na yung mga layered. Yung mga hair. Mm, Pareho right. yung ano, haircut. Kaya ang mga to, mga short. Kasi layered. So tinatanggal ko siya. Kailangan hanapin mo yung, um, yung shortest. As Correct. much as possible. Mm-mm. Para kung ikat mo siya, yung ka- konti lang yung nag- nag-gagandit. Ayan si... Lalo si, na yung... Si Shane, kailan nyo kakalboin si Shane? Sabi nga ni Shane, ikat nyo na yung hair, kasi wait lang. Pero si Shane, yung pinakamahaba ko na donate niya. Sabi niya, ito donate niya. Ayaw pa nilang ikat. Ganon, ito donate mo kay Rocky. Ganon mo ko mag si Rocky. <laughs> Kaya ano yung buhis-buho? Buhis-buho? Alam mo noon, may plano rin akong gumawa ng something with hair. Pero yung iniisip ko parang rugby. Tapos yung gano'n lang gano'n. Iisip lang niya, kakalatan niya yung rugby. Tapos, tapos patang ulit, gano'n. Hanggang makapal. Yun lang, walang ganyan. Walang Sansil, uh, Vidal, Sasun, Sarun. <laughs> so natanggal ko na yung mga short. Okay. Oh, ano ba ito? Cooking show ba ito? Mm. Ah, nagugupit ka rin pala. Oo. Oh, oh. Ang yeah. separate mo siya. So kailangan pantayin. Magkarabi na tayo. Okay, sige. Uh, yeah. Kasi k- kailangan natin i-flat para ma-coat yung mga hair. Tapos i-twist natin. Ayan, na-twist na siya. Tapos i-organize ko na siya dito. Banda. Yeah, expert na. Expert na talaga. Tingnan mo ang organize ko. Oo nga, kaya may ganito yung work. fixation niyo with hair, no? Si Rocky. Ikaw pa yung nag-tagal. Oo, ako, tinitiis ko lang talaga. Kaninang buhok yan? Mga buntok people. Long hair, ego roads. Yes. Hindi po ito, ano, tails. Walang Tagalog dyan. Oo. Wala. So, taka lang, na ano ba ito sa headhunting? Something. May ganun ba? Subliminal? May relation? Ganun. May ano ba yun, Rocky? Ano yan, yung ano? May parang kasi... scalping or headhunting. Yung, yung mga lola ko, iniipon yung young hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hindi yung interview. Tapos susuotin nila sa palala. Totoo! Oh. 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 Nakakatakot! As in yung sarili mong hair, parang ipunin mo kapag ano sa mga hair. Such a tradition is. Oh ma, pero trend. Uh, such a trend started in the 80s. It's not like I always thought that it was a trend. But it's not like <laughs> Nag-observe ka one time na maglagay yung, like, yung lola mo or... Hmm? Parang uh, casual lang, nilalagay nila with the, yung snake bone. Mm-hmm. Oh, Pang ganun, tapos dadami yung hair. Mm-hmm. Bago magsimba. So, itong mga book na to galing uh, Bontok ba to? Oo, uh, galing Bontok. 
Col tonto. Oh. Importante. Quindi, <ride> eh, allora, um, mezzo. Mezzo è una chef. A poi, non mi viene che serio, che serio. Non ha fatto vedere chi sia. Non mi fa mai chi sia. Buon top di Vienna. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. So, you're weaving your ancestry. Okay, so thank you for watching that. Um, the next part, that was at the end of the video, yung exhibition was in 2017, but most of um, the studio shots were from a month and a half ago for a different, so what we're making now is for a different exhibition. So, um, I guess because the theme, I mean, the topic is art and art making in the time of COVID. Um, that sort of like gives you a look at what we're doing this year. Um, but last year, I also did a different project. Um, I don't know if it was intentional. It's called the Ration Series, and it gives you kind of like, a, it answers this topic. So let me just share the screen. Um, LK, would you mind sharing screen? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, she, she's... Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this series, um, um, these um, these paintings are made in lockdown last year. It's called Russian series Field Knows. Um, I'm going to read to you the annotations um, for the images. And yeah, the an these annotations form part of an upcoming digital archive called Registry of Deeds, a project by Dr. Patrick Flores for the Gray Center for Arts and Inquiry. University of Chicago, Illinois. Next. So I also uh, did an, install an installation version of the archive for the Creative City exhibition last year here in Baguio City. Next. Next, okay. Um, Thursday, January 30, 2020, the first COVID-19 case in the Philippines is confirmed. A 38-year-old Chinese oh, woman. Yeah. Next. Monday, March 16, 2020, the national government imposes a lockdown on the whole of Luzon. A few weeks into the lockdown, the country is in chaos, largely from a delayed and grave mishandling of the national government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Down the line, the semi-devolution of responsibilities to local government units 
becomes the promising way out. I am in lockdown in San Juan, La Union. The plan is the needed contrast a few days by the beach to assist a fellow artist and his two friends in some work and then head back home to the mountains. The few days become two and a half months. Next. Okay, next. Um, okay, can you hear me? Yep, uh, we're now on Sunday, March 22. Oh, sorry. Sorry, mukhang may problema yung internet ko. Um, Sunday, March 20 to 2020, I received a call from a friend telling me that a friend of his working at the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine disclosed that around 170 deaths from the virus have not been included in the official tally of the Department of Health. The RITM was the first lab in the country that tested viable samples from COVID-19 patients. Infected medical personnel at the Institute were also not included in the latest tally. The data crisis would blow up in the coming days and continue on for months. Thanks. Thursday, March 30. Thursday, March 30, 2020. The days stretch out to managing our domestic microaggressions and dealing with access to food stock, available funds, living space, and sources of income. Beyond the doorstep, living in an empty tourist guest house, our domain is never tenuous with a crisis as a whole. It is never at bay as the waves of disasters grow bigger and bigger, mirroring the exponential spread of the virus. The domain requires dealing with huge amounts of data, the unrepentant bad news, the, get, the guest house caretaker's children, the dog with a dangling broken leg, the confused workers at the neighboring construction site, the barangay captain in the van screaming from the speaker, saying he will shoot whoever defies quarantine orders. When can we head back home? The question manifests in the half nods and dead glances we give each other in the morning. Thanks. You see a picture of sunset. Yeah. Next. Monday, April 6. Next. Tuesday, April 7. Tuesday, April 7, 2020. Left with some paint, one reliable paintbrush from a worn-out stock and discarded plywood, I plan a series of paintings of food bought from the market. The first is a bag of dried salted fish. Next. I remember a bunch of loggers about to head out to the mountains with bags of dried fish and legumes. It takes several days of camping in the forest to cut down enough trees for a small house. About the same amount of time, I finish each painting. I look at the painting and remember the blue marble. In 1972, an almost full image of the Earth was taken from NASA's Apollo 17. It estimates an imagination of wholeness and yet plucked from the actual vastness of its negative space. At the center of the image is the African continent the supposed birthplace of human genesis. This hindsight hovers like a guide throughout the making of a series, but also an example of gathering or making sense of the shared conditions of struggle. Next. Wednesday, April 8th. Yes, please play all the way to Ananalang. Saturday, May 2. Okay. Let's know. Sunday, 
Saturday, May 2. Saturday, May 2, 2020. Communities in the Cordillera respond to the pandemic crisis with traditional practices involving community lockdowns and rituals. Animal sacrifice is a pig, but more often a chicken. It is killed with the bile. I mean, it is killed, then the bile is read for omen. The Tungao, a set number of days, often at the beginning or end of an agricultural cycle, when everyone stays put in their houses waiting for omens. A migratory bird, a rainfall, a clear sky. Years ago, in the community of Mainit Bonto, when a Tungao was imposed and a group of tourists snuck into the village, locally known for its hot springs, they were fined and had to pay with a black pig. I cannot decide which cultural symbol in this narrative will serve better, if not already co-opted from its source. The transactional cultural market of an artificial nation-ness. Is it the tungao or the animal sacrifice? Next. May 3, Sunday. Okay. Friday, July 3, 2020. It has been almost a week since coming back up home to cool weather. An hour's drive took a few days of splitting hairs over travel passes, online applications for returning residents, health declaration forms issued by health offices without actual lab tests to back up the certificates, renting a van, inconsistent gangsterist policies from a national pandemic task force, not headed by health experts. We drive past checkpoint after checkpoint of camouflaged policemen dazed in their fictional war. I live at the edge of the valley in Latrin and Benguet. Most of the highland vegetables that supplies Metro Manila and the rest of the lowlands are traded in this town. Due to the pandemic, trade has often been halted. Among COVID-19 positive cases of mostly police and medical frontliners, a few truckers have also contracted the virus, and at one point, the biggest vegetable trading point post had to be shut and hosed down. And just like that, with unstable market prices, many farmers had to leave tons of vegetables to rot midway to market or right on the farm. They won't even bother with the last harvest of tomatoes still on the vine. They've turned red and would overripe and and would be overripe, and no vendor will collect even if the farmer can afford to get the produce delivered or foolish enough to sell at 10 cents to a peso. Months ago, while in San Juan, we bought a bag of jaundiced broccoli from a vendor who bought who brought Highland vegetables from Baguio City every week. I painted that piece of home but made it greener. Monday, August 10. And the next. Picture of Okra for Russian series. And then August 19. August 19. A day, Wednesday, August 19, 2020, a day, a time. Most days I take a jog on the outskirts of the valley that I have never been to since my family migrated from Bontok Go. The dis discovery of a long back road through a forest and the routine of physical work answers a recent obsession with pattern and the new brought on by the pandemic dystopia. Yes. As the virus spreads, political opportunists and bureaucrats continue swindling the country at the probable cost of irreversible corruption damage. More likely than not, the local government units will have to pick up the pieces as they have in this pandemic crisis. It harks back to artificial nationness and the roles that small communities are forced to become in putting meaning to this fiction. last night. 
Next. Um, the Blue Marble. At the end of what is now a familiar jogging route is a view of Barangay Binang. The village sits on a small valley surrounded by pine forests and chayote plantations. At a glance, the barangay looks like a warehouse district with its rows of greenhouses built with steel and bamboo frames and covered with translucent garden plastic. The greenhouses supply cut flowers and succulents in the same trade reach as the highland vegetable farms. Inside the, green inside the greenhouses, farmers harvest rows of chrysanthemums, roses, carnations, and gladiolus. They are put in crates and hauled, shipped on the back of vans and driven off. Then the farmers get right on back to work until the flowers bud again. So that was um, a reading of the annotation for Ration series for last year's project. It was not intended to be annotated. So most of these um, journal entries were recovered much later when I was asked to annotate the series for the project. So that kind of gives you a sense of um, how lucky I guess I was last year to be able to sit down and paint um, amidst all that was happening um, and then being able to go back and look at what happened throughout the year, almost at the end of the year by doing an annotation of, you know, of the months that passed by. This year is much different, of course. Um, I don't know if things have changed that much. Um, art and art making in the time of COVID seems sort of, seems like a a bit of a stretch when it comes to um, to you know continuing with art making. Um, but here it's been largely just trying to push, and then still trying to I know. Um, think of family and friends, yeah. So um, um, I would like now to go, to move on to perhaps the Q&A and we can discuss these two projects. That's okay. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Sir Rocky. And for uh, the reading of your of the annotations for your work Russian series. Hi everyone, welcome back. And we hope that all of you are still okay. And to, before we go to the Q&A portion, to recap what was discussed, LK will give us a synthesis or the summary of points uh, that was involved in the presentation a while ago. Okay, thank you, Miguel. Uh, from Slido, I see a lot of interesting questions, so I'll make this quick. Um, there were two takeaways for me. One was on the video part, where he shared his um, mode of production, how he uses component uh, as an important component in his artwork. So in the video, Hanina Kawayan was interviewing Rocky while he was working for an um, for for his artwork, and. Um, We've shown how the hair was used in his past uh, exhibition, Collective Memories. And yun tumatak sa akin sa namin ni Rocky na parang tongue-in-cheek daw na parang you're physically weaving the bantok DNA. Ayun. And the second part is how Russian series is created and, and again weaved during the lockdown. Uh, it shows na um, yung lockdown, um, iba't iba yung naging um, effects sa atin. We showed from uh, he showed from the Russian series how he uh, how it is personal for him. Ano ba nang yari sa kanya surrounding the lockdown last year? And he also mentioned about the transactional cultural market of artificial nationness. So, ayon. And I think um, uh, this lockdown he made it uh, transformational. Your elements around from the physical bag of dried fish, he was able to connect it to the blue marble picture. And also, another transformation is the physical John Dist broccoli in San Juan, uh, where they bought from a farmer who got his produce from Baguio. So, John Dist, it looks like rotten, but he made it greener 
uh, a greener broccoli in his ration series. So, yep, those are my two takeaways. So, how he uses hair as a component and yung how ration series is created during the lockdown. Thank you very much, LK, for giving us a synthesis on Rocky's presentation as well as your own understanding on it. And before we start our Q&A, a reminder lang na we have sent the we have sent the Slido link in our chat if any of you are interested to ask questions to our speaker today. So we'll start our Q&A session. So first among the uh, first among the questions is from Prof Ne. Very similar with the next question actually. What made you interested in hair as medium? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Sorry, uh, the, my the first question is, what uh, made you interested <laughs> in hair as medium for your artwork? Right. Um, when I started making works way back 2015, not a lot of way back, but, you know, to, to work on this solo show, my first solo show, I always wanted to go back to objects because um, it has like sort of like a deep personal history with me. My mom used to run a souvenir shop and there were lots of objects there. Um, I went to elementary school um, that was to an elementary school that was just beside the Bontoc Museum. So mm. this fascination with objects and then singling out hair from that um, from that plethora. Um, was something that you know I, I tried to study since that first exhibition and then remembered you know that it was always there in Quentong as a Lola and um, that it's also present in some of the objects that you see in the Bangta Museum and then of course making making this whole story out of that or understanding the story the the pronouns are just like um, what pair meant to the community. Yeah. Okay. I see. And then the next question is, can you go deeper into how your spirituality affects your art making? Uh, mm. <laughs> spirituality. I think I spirituality. Mm. Um, I guess I was raised religious, Catholic, and, and but I didn't really take it seriously because of you know um, the un very uncomfortable politics behind it, um, especially in 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 local Catholicism. Um, but so spirituality, I think I take a lot from history from 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 heritage how you know these rituals are ever present when when I was growing up and I'm in channeling that into my work I don't think it um, is something that's deliberate it just happened okay see you uh, that's really interesting, no? Kasi parang since culture yung pinag-uusapan, parang I think there's an impression that spirituality impacts the process very much. So moving on to uh, the next question. Um, since Russian series look at... Uh, the next question. Uh, the next question is, since Russian series look at community rituals and culture as sources of for your artworks, has it ever received negative feedback from audiences? I haven't yet received a lot of feedback from that series since um, exhibiting it here, at least in its physical form, Dito Sa Baguio. Um, I would love to. I mean, if 
is only to <laughs> hear from the audience because it's kind of hard to get that um, in the situation that we're in. Okay, moving. But a Russian series also just sorry, can I add to that? And sorry, I didn't read the first part of the question. Since Russian series looks at community rituals and culture, I don't think Russian series looks at looks at community rituals and cultures. I'm. I think the whole idea of the annotation was to sort of look at what's happening in these communities, um, but not particularly to you know. Put a different meaning to rituals and culture. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and next uh, question is, um, how did you realize that your own culture can be an inspiration for your own craft as an art? Uh, <laughs> well, um, I think that's a difficult question or um, kasi it, I don't know if that question intends to um to connote that that my own culture is an inspiration for my craft. I think um for a lot of indigenous peoples in the present who are not, you know, in their communities. I'm 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 sure it's more a struggle than an inspiration to be honest. Um, it's a it's a lived um, thing, so I don't think it's something that's separate. So that you may want to say that it's an inspiration for it, for a kind of work. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, that's sort of like, I think in many ways uh, I'm I'm also part of. I mean, in many ways within the circles that I. Um, I associate with young writers and young artists. Um, we always talk about how oh, we have to be careful or should we be careful about appropriating our own, you know, um, culture for for the gallery. Um, yes. And sometimes in the process of realizing that it's it's not really that separate um we get confused and then we get judged and they get- a, to me it's uh, i go long go long were you supposed to say something but Now, let's just move on to the next question. Okay, sige. Yung sasabihin ko lang sana, I guess it's really important to have these open forums no, to uh, clarify the understanding of audiences, ganun, and to correct parang misinterpretation. And it's really nice that uh, even, I think, sensitive questions are about the artworks are uh, addressed in, the, in this talk. Next question is of uh, for artists who will use found objects as their medium, what advice can you give? Perhaps what objects can they start to use? Well, um, both question. <laughs> um, for, for artists who are using found objects, I think, um, I don't know how to give advice to that. Pero, pero sa akin kasi I grew up with lots of objects. So it's sort of like a fascination that I was so already attached to. It wasn't sort of like, uh, I should choose a medium and then go, go from there. But yeah, just for, I think, beyond, parang I look a lot at personal history. So what, whatever objects that have been like always um affected by then you start from that. Okay. And the next question is, in this growing age of modernization, consumerism, and commodification, 
Where do you see your art heading in the next 10 years? Um, considering uh, the situation, it's kind of hard to make an assessment of what 10 years in the future will be like. Um, and yeah, so it's hard. I don't know if I can answer that question. But, um, you know, it's always, it's always been a, a, a struggle. So even now for to talk about culture and commodification. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then for the next one is what other found objects are you most interested on in working with next? I'm not yet sure. Still working on the hairs. Um, I'll probably still continue working with hair in the next um, year, perhaps, and then maybe go back to painting and then still continue using um, wood and stainless steel. And then I think uh, so far, uh, the remaining question is, are you willing to make an NFT art piece? I've heard, I haven't really researched a lot, but I've, from what I've read so far, um, I don't think, firstly, the, the space that I work in, the materials that I work, that I work with, I don't think mm. necessarily can be digitally translated. Mm. So not sure if I will make an NFT art But also because that market is kind of... Okay. And then uh, another question went in. For you, in this time when practicality and functionality is most important, what is the role of contemporary art? And where does it play in the lives of communities? Um, by contemporary art, you mean like art in the now? Um, most probably. Po. The kind of art you're practicing. Yes. <laughs> I, honestly. Mm. Play, all right. Or this play, sorry. Yes, contemporary art, because it's hard even to define what contemporary right. art is at this point. Um, um, working with Access Art Project since 2010 when you know we sort of like worked around a manifesto of working of, of making people get access to art and contemporary art and using that uh, medium to uh, you know talk about community issues I think that's where I would you know put that role but contemporary oh, at least like you know because there is a lot of um, there is a lot of space where you can talk about community issues outside of, um, you know, existing colonial um, practices or, you know, forms of dialogue or using contemporary, I mean, when we did the Waiting Sheds project, when, where we, um, um the done decorated painted and you know, did artworks and these waiting sheds waiting sheds are those like little way stations where you wait for the bus when you come mm -hmm. from your community along the Halsema highway which is you know the uh, uh, highest highway system in the country um that's where you kind of like try and see where you, you can you know make people um uh, 
or converse with people because it in itself is a way station. And when you put something there, a decorative element, a familiar um, symbol, you know, it sort of like tries to open up further discussion. Okay, and I would just like to add na dito dun sa question na yun. Uh, is there a, since, some, since most of the time communities are uh, involved in, in, kunwari, in your works and na nakikita na yung works mo, was there a time na, for example, they didn't understand what your works meant, ganun? I think you asked me this before. <laughs> yeah. Um, so of course there are many times, not because not hindi lang naman dahil from the whether different audiences, different reactions. You know. Um. Yeah, and the how, I mean, some people would say artists don't have to explain or whatever. I just explain my process, I guess, most of the time. Because I always rely, I suppose, on a narrative, a story, a personal history before I make a project. So therefore, in explaining how it was made or how it was, you know, thought about or the, you know, whatever, the effort that went into it. And then you try to not answer the question like that, but help, you know. The audience understand that part. Oh, okay, so talagang important din yung process, no, in, for them to understand. Next, uh, in the questions is in most of East and Southeast Asian cultures, the cutting of hair is a representation of mourning, punishment, or defiance. Would this be relevant? Would this be a relevant observation in regards? your use of hair as material during the pandemic? Um, um, mourning, punishment, or defiance. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think I belong to a culture that, that represents that. Um, like I said in the video, it's just, you know, like looking at the personal history. Hmm. I guess it's relevant if that's how people look at the work. But in response to the pandemic, or that it's that it's a response to the pandemic, um, that wasn't the intention. Okay. Uh, and I guess that's Uh, um, may I ask uh, may I just um, put in a little bit uh, Rocky can you hear me can you hear me Rocky yes, yeah I can uh, no, the, the, the reason yes. why I ask you about hair is because uh, it has I, I, I recall mm -hmm. another artist in the 18th century her name is Adelaida Paterno and she used hair and in fact i think it's in mm -hmm. the that particular painting is in the banco central collection and mm -hmm. she used hair i think her own hair if mm -hmm. i'm not mistaken to weave or to embroider it into mm -hmm. a painting a landscape painting so um the i i don't know if you also reference this no but for me the co co the connection between that women's, particular women's uh, art, art process, which is embroidery and using hair, mm -hmm. is somehow linked in your answer to the life of your Lola, uh, uh, the environment, mm -hmm. and uh, the stories from your mother. And um, th that's it. I saw, I saw that link and I, I'm fascinated. And number two, was there something about the hair that you like? I mean, the texture. I saw you in the video. And it is tedious, detailed right. work. And you know, yes. women who embroider, 
also yeah. th- their eyes go also at some point. And when I asked them, they also said their hips suffer also, no? I mean, sumasakit na yung hips nila after prolonged embroidery. So I'm, I'm just curious about that process that you're going through when you're making those, you know, very little movements. Okay na ako. Oh, um, yes, it is. Uh, I mean, yes, it, it does relate to... Um, craft and okay. taking so much time you know, and doing the same thing over again. Okay. Um, or, you know, grand, grand aunts uh, weaving and, and they oh. do it every day so they can produce art. So yes, it, it relates to that and I've always been fascinated by that also growing around it but never really doing it. You know. Um, because it was women's work, so. But now, parang you know, it's it's been I know, a few months now, <laughs> just hair and thread, oh, oh. and glue. <laughs> right, right. No, the the yeah, the craftness of it all. No, the repetitiveness, the tediousness, the time-consuming process. And the fact that it's related to women's work, I think that's what fascinates me about your work. Honestly, to be very honest, even your paintings look like weaving as well. Not weaving literally, but it looks like you are simulating also that weaving tradition. And in that sense, even if it's not conscious in reference to one of the questions, you know, you don't really use your culture to be an inst- that's so utilitarian. You know, mm-hmm. it, you do it orga- organically, no? And somehow you draw from it, no? And, and you know, yung ganito yung parang, oh, I'm, I'm fascinated with this medium. I'll use it. it, it's, look, it it's, it's like the process is very personal, right? It's very personal and it is so drawing from your surroundings. And what about those surroundings that make you feel, that evoke some kind of feeling to you? So, ang implication sa akin, you're very close to the women of your family, aren't you? I, I think mostly to, because, you know, um, I grew up, I, part of my childhood is spent at my grandfather's house. And in the morning, all the, the grand aunts would gather there because it's the closest home to the church before they go to their actual homes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and then my mom always has too many friends. Mm-mm-mm. Yes. Thank you, Rafi. Mm-hmm. And you Thank know, you. I think also we have to talk about. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sige, go lang. Yeah, I mean, uh, just a quick note because um, when you grow up and you, I mean, the, when you grow up gender wise, you don't know what you are yet. And then um, because culturally it's also very uh, macho. Where I grew up, um, in in a way that you cannot be a trans woman without performing a woman's role, or you cannot be gay without performing a woman's role or a male role. So, you know, in the end, I, don't, I was always exposed to the women in the family because I was a bit more effeminate than the than the men in the family. Uh-oh. Or if I decide to go with the men, then I have to perform certain roles. But I was just more comfortable at home. Okay, so parang gender becomes some kind of performance, as Judy Butler would say, no? Uh, it's performative, and gen- and 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 yeah. identity is never is never fixed or static. You cannot say this is my culture. Okay, I'll appropriate the bulul to my to my paintings, no? Because it's also very, um, yeah, uh, fluid and flexible. Union, no? So the question of indigeneity cannot also be brought into some kind of essence, tama? And it, I, I think that's, that's that's very obvious in your work, no? uh, especially your annotations yeah. to the registry of deeds. Yeah. Okay. Sige. Ah, and 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 a related question: What do you mean by artificial nationness? Um, 
it I mean, it it's, it's uh it parts to it preferences um you know imagine communities ah sige ah ah get Benedict Anderson okay sige it's really no. I also um I mean in general like language palang as an example parang people always you know parang hear and people say, why do you speak so much in English? Or why do you, do you not speak a lot of Tagalog? Ganyan. Eh, parang kami naman dito din. Or at least I grew up in a in a community where both languages um had some form of hegemonic, you know, mm. Mm. <laughs> um, quality to them. Uh, yes. <laughs> a part Unless, of the idea uh-oh. of the nation. Right, right, right. Oh. Unless there are questions, no? Nagigets ko yon the hegemony. What is a nation? But the, the one that is defined by the center. Okay, and that's that's what's yeah. fascinating with contemporary art, no? Sinisurface yung ganitong questions. And by the way, uh, sabihin ko lang na yung contemporary art sa klase na to, yes, it's a moving target. And we spent so much time periodizing what contemporary art is and we've we've discovered that just this definition that it is the art of the now is actually very reductive and so we unsettle that as well the notion of contemporary art it's actually a very exciting subject and that is why this lecture series no we would like to expose uh, or no not expose we would like to see a range of voices that would somehow be variations, variants. Yun yung sikat ngayon eh. Variants of contemporary art. No? Parang vaccine. Ay, parang virus. Parang ganon. So, yes. yeah. Ayun lang. Sige. Unless may questions pa, no? Huwag na tayo mag-slide, oh. Just raise your hands. Tayo-tayo lang naman yung nandito. Most of you are my students anyway, with a few. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Sige. So, I'll shut up <laughs> until called upon. <laughs> Sige. So, we invite our classmates to ask any question to our speaker, Rocky. So, just uh, turn on your mic if you're ready. There are a few graduate students here. No? I see Claire. Uh, Villa Corta, long time na- no si Claire. And, uh, and yeah. Sige. So. Sige, ako na lang po yung mag- Ah, ikaw magtanong. Sige. Sige I'm just curious, paano mo pala kinuha yung hair? Like, paano, <laughs> paano, ka, nag- paano ka nag-ask sa members ko na rin ng community to have their hair, ganun. Tapos, puma- paano sila pumayag? Yan ang tanong. And then, sa, ano, sa video, um, so I think I did say there na it's from, galing siya sa isang parlor sa Bonto. Mm. Pero, ano, proseso din yan kasi, of course, oh, marami din um, issues around acquiring hair, di ba? Parang may mga ethical issues sa mga wig makers, ganyan. So parang I ask na lang yung mga salon if they have, I mean, it cuts through like asking people kasi they're giving it, they're, they're having their hair cut anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, some salons uh, donate them to cancer institutions, even in Bonto. Um, uh-huh. So I get from them. I, I ask na na where you gonna So, um, but there was this woman who's been keeping the hair and wanted to sell it to one of the Filipino wig makers. Um, but then she decided to get sayo na lang. <laughs> but she also makes um props for during mga festivals sa amin. Kasi merong part ng damit dati na lalagyan ng buho sa likod. Para sa, yung parang woven cap ng, mm-hmm. ng men sinilagyan siya ng buhok sa so, tingin ko magawa ng mga yan. Oh. 
yeah so that's how where I got my topic okay sige thank you po so ang ganda ang sarap talagang pag-aralan yung process di ba yung process Miguel uh, I, I think that's a lot of stories a lot of insights would come in if we ask the process yung kwento di ba rather than ano ibig sabihin nito yung ganun <laughs> Kasi iba-iba nga ang interpretations natin. Tsaka very uh, evident din yung process na. I just want to bring in yung isa mo pang work, yung epidermis. Uh, yung collecting rock samples and all. Parang from, Ayan. if you would imagine uh, the, create, the production of the artwork from scratch. Parang ang dami talagang pagdadaanan from planning, logistics, and all. Until you reach the final form of the artwork. And very interesting mm-hmm. lang. It just, I guess, oh, it's also interesting. I mean, personally, I think a lot of it is also very familiar. So mm-hmm. it was easier than, mm-hmm. you know, than what if someone didn't go up around rice fields going to 164 different rice paddies collecting mud. Wow. Would be a different experience for someone who didn't go up in the mountains. Wow. Rice paddies. 164 different rice paddies. Yun yung pinanggalingan ng rocks mo. Amazing. Oh, the oh. mud samples. The rocks are from... Sin- I have another question din. Since, kunwari, ikaw, di ba, from, ano ka, so, from the mountain oh. province mismo. So, parang, uh, in some way, parang okay lang na uh, yung artworks mo is uh, about your own his- personal history as well. However, for example, if there's another artist na kunwari tagalabas, pero gusto din niya gumawa ng art involving the, cord- the culture of the Cordilleras, is it okay or parang offensive siya at your perspective? <laughs> Good question. And they're different. It's a very hard question to answer. Okay. Um, even I, you know, um, can represent a community. I only represent my experience of that community and how far I want to, you know, talk about it. Um, if you're not, you know, I mean, it's, it's a very sensitive issue. Mm-hmm. And I think the easiest way to go through that question is to ask people who would like to work with these communities to come to these communities first. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, it, it's not it's not you know answer to a life you haven't lived. So. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Feel the mud. Feel feel the struggle. No, the lived struggle. No, it's not as if you parachute in a culture, uh, get a few icons, get a few objects, and that's it. Makikita naman yon eh. No, actually, this has been a raging debate, uh, Miguel. No, among us, <laughs> uh, in the in the art community. No, yung yung ganyana, the question of appropriation. Somebody parachuting in, and then uh, and then talking about a culture through their paintings no and in in the process exoticize it no so i, I think naman i nag evolve naman na yung discourse na yon and uh mismo ang mga young artists lalo na um aware sila doon in fact sabi mo nga reflexive kayo no pinag-uusapan ninyo kayong mga artists pang nagsama-sama yung notion nga ng appropriating and exoticizing your own culture Eh, lalo na kung tagalabas, tapos shoot, parachute, and then, you know. So, parang ano na yon Nag-transform na yung struggle doon. I think so, no? Oh. But uh, enough of that. Andre is raising her hand. Eh, his hand. Good afternoon po. Uh, I'm curious lang po regarding what happens after the art or exhibit. Uh, regarding temporality and siguro site specificities, especially since hair po yung medium. So, ano po kaya yung, what happens after every art piece? 
Hi, um, I have the same question as Andre po, actually. Hi, Andre. Hello. So, uh, they're talking about the life of the artwork. Especially if it's temporal. Temporary. Right. Uh -uh. I think in, in, in the creation of the work, um, before the work is created, I, I think a lot of my work is site-specific. In the sense that um, I may show in a gallery or in a museum, I would work more for a museum than, unfortunately, <laughs> than a gallery, I think. But if it can be shown in both spaces, can I? so um, after the work is installed, if it's not intended for selling, then I keep them around for, and then use them for different mm. But, you know, parang, yeah at least for the few installations in the past. Um, in in one inst one installation that I did was in for, for this house in Nepal for an art group, they reused the thread that I put inside the room. So I, so I spent like weeks then inside the room just putting threads through a maze. And then I just left it with them. If it's like, if it's, if it's hard to make, like the hairs, then I keep them. If it's something that I can do again, okay, um, uh -oh. with the same material, then you know. Uh oh, in, in other words, you rework them, no? You rework <laughs> them probably because you will have you'll be exhibiting in another space, diba? Uh oh, so it really work more than the space. Then it will be a. Okay, na Andre and Burn. Yes, well, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I just remembered what was here before. Medyo nakat si Burn, no? Yung internet natin pare-parehong spotty. Yes, Burn. Uh, yeah, I, I was yes, well, because I remember speaker Mr. Mark and then uh -huh. we found out that, you know, every... Art of his is temporary. Um, I also just want to commend the speaker po because I think um listening to his works, there's really a story mm -hmm. that we can get out of his works. And um it's my first time po to talk to an artist who uses hair. <laughs> and um sa salon po kasi before, ma'am, I shamper po hindi to napunta kay sir, no? Pero there was someone who was buying hair and then I didn't know what they would do with it. And then now I know someone who makes art out of it. And it makes me think na really art can come out of something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then like yeah. you said, it's organic. It's organic na it comes from a culture. Mm. Thank you po. And your voice is so nice. <laughs> oh <God>. Thank you. <laughs> well, I just like to say there are also other artists who are seeing I don't particularly just use hair, but there yeah. are other artists right now in the contemporary Manila art scene who use hair, embroider with hair, um, make jewelry out of hair. Um, I also know a Thai artist who uses a lot of hair the same way that I bet she does a lot of it. intricate embroidery. And I met a friend in Taiwan who, in uh, her UP, in her thesis work for, for studio arts, uh -oh. she used hair and then put hair around the kitchen. So a lot of artists see hair. Wow. Uh -oh. She also does earrings. Dangling earrings. <laughs> no, no, I mean yeah, that's some boy, yeah. Okay. Oh no, the Filipino. Filipino. The Filipino. Let's look her up, guys. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, yeah thank you. Uh oh, thank you. No. So it it you know, uh at this point in his life, uh, Rocky uses hair, but then again, the surroundings will probably um, yield something else. So it's all about the surroundings, like you were talking about rocks and, and mud samples at some point. And then in your Ration series, it's more like painting and uh, what goes on in the cultural market, diba? and the struggles, no? in the struggles during lockdowns, the various checkpoints that one has to go through, mm -hmm. the food wastage because of God's stringent policy, 
things like that, no? So, nagki-criss-cross, no? But actually, it's the environment that that gives the material and the process. Na? Okay. Sige. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Questions, comments. Wala na. <laughs> Mukhang wala na. Mukhang wala na. Oo. Natatahimik na lang siguro. <laughs> Doon sa trabaho, nagre-reflect pa. Tapos baka bukas, ay sayang hindi ko natanong kay Rocky. Anyway, pwede ka naman naming tanong yan, no? Hindi naman nag- natatapos dito. Oo. Ah, uh, what's your last na lang Miguel pwede? Ah, uh, and LK. Uh, so what are you working on now? An exhibition, a project? We're working a project. Yes, we're working. We're remember the loom, the hair loom that you saw in the video. We're making something that's three times wider than that. Um, that's part of a four component installation for the upcoming Asia Pacific Trinale in Brisbane. Oh, I see. Meron pa rin yeah. palang uh, Trinale. Oh, at tuloy yon, face to face yon. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh. I mean they they're in a bit of their situation. So. I Unfortunately, see. we can't go, but we can uh, send art. Your place. works will go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. Sige, congratulations. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Thank you for having me, everyone. Thank you. And same. Keep okay. safe. Uh, moving, moving on after, uh, I'll just give a quick synthesis since 4 o'clock now. What happened? So, uh, we've discovered na uh, Rocky use, uses found objects as like hair and other materials uh, it, to uh, show yung person to because of the personal history and show the um, the the experiences or the past that happened dun sa material na yun. And uh, sinabi din niya na sa very first exhibit pa lang na meron ng aspect ng found objects. And dun naman sa question on spirituality, he said that he's not directly or deliberately mm-hmm. channeling a spirituality into it, but more of uh, dwelling into the heritage and aspect of history. And then, dun naman sa question about um, inspiration. Uh, it's not really uh, getting the culture as an inspiration, but rather more of a struggle. And at the same time, uh, he has warned about being careful with appropriating our own cultures since uh, it's more of the um, process of uh, getting there rather than uh, taking it as it is. Another one is uh, he said that uh, he grew he grew up with a lot of um, objects uh, of found objects as well for example yung um, uh, yung mga material sa bahay and yung experiences kasama nung uh, women in the family and at the same time he said that it's hard to say what will happen in the next 10 years so medyo unpredictable yung magiging future nung uh, work na pero so far he thinks that he he will still continue working with hairs, painting, and wood. And in terms of yung NFT artwork, he said that Rocky hasn't uh, researched about it much. Uh, and uh, space or materials that he works with is uh, not yet... Unsaleable. Good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unmarketable. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, we've realized that there is a sense of uh, performance of identity dun sa... Uh, being nung artworks niya since it involved not just culture but also yung formation nung identity nung community along with yung heritage na kasama dun. And at the same time, uh, we this, we've brought up yung epidermis, yung collection of mud samples and then a personal realization lang sa mga materials na ginagamit ni Rocky. Parang 
ano siya, may aspect ng time, no? Like, for example, yung hair, it takes time to yeah, grow. To and, grow. for example, yung rocks, it takes yeah. time to form. Ayun. Wonderful. So very, very relevant siya dun sa sinabi na na about history and heritage. And at the same time, na brought up din kanina yung uh, our, about uh, artist representing Cordillera kung since medyo malabo pang topic yung um, pag jump in sa isang culture no just to make an uh, make an artwork out of that and then uh, i realized din na diyan pumapasok yung ethics ng ethnographic mm-hmm. research para mm-hmm. hindi maging offensive no so immersing yourself with the community talaga mm-hmm. kung gusto mo silang makilala and then uh, finally sa latter part sa mention yung pagiging temporary ng artworks what happens to them so rocky said na uh, tinatago naman niya and he reworks on it for uh, another project or uh, reusing them and um, at the same time he mentioned about mm-hmm. other artists using hair for example uh, yung gumagawa ng jewelry and things like that and at the same time uh, may emphasis may emphasis din sa aspect of uh, ayun niya, um, the history and the value talaga of the materiality of artworks. Ayan. So thank you for, uh, so to our audiences, thank you for participating in our question and answer portion. So moving on, since 404 na rin, uh, we'll, I'll hand back the mic to LK for the giving of certificates. Yep, uh, it's already 404. You can stay if you can. But if my class kay okay lang din. Because uh, we'll be having, um, uh, Prof. May will be giving a synthesis of the whole guest lecture series. You know, well, hindi lang kay Rocky, but since yung sa BTG pa. Okay, so before we go to the uh, closing remarks from Prof. May, uh, I'd like to present the Certificate of Appreciation to our speaker today, Rohi Kahigan, for sharing his time and insights on contemporary art in the time of COVID. So thank you, Rocky. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now I would like to call on Prof. May for her closing remarks on Art Studies 140 guest lecture series with the theme, Art and Art Making in the Time of COVID. So guys, let's give Prof. May a virtual round of applause. Yeah, I was actually reluctant to do this because uh, I was say I was telling I was telling um, LK that it's really you know I, I want to be like a fly on the wall or a fly in the wall, but uh, but I was prevailed mm-hmm. upon. So sige na nga. okay. <laughs> um, teka, ha? hindi ko ma. Papatay ito. Okay, sige. So, uh, tinitle ko yung Go With The Flow, Go You Must, no? And just a few key themes. I hope I don't take up much of your time. So, I have prepared some kind of draft. And uh, I hope that I don't do many ad-libs, no? So, first, the context uh, of this lecture series. Um, the guest lecture series is a major component, actually a final project. So uh, guys, makakahinga na kayo ng malalim. Tapos na yung ating final project. Final report na lang ang kailangan nyo. In the syllabus of Art Studies 143, Contemporary Art, which is required course for all art studies majors. It was instituted in 2018 after a major revision of the AB Art Studies curriculum. The only program, this is our bragging rights, guys, the only program of its kind in the Philippines, if not in Southeast Asia, to my knowledge. I accepted the assignment to teach the course with reservations at first, no? So muntik nang hindi ma-offer ito, since I felt that it is best taught in less restrictive and vexed conditions. But judging from the way this pandemic is turning out for us, and continue to turn out for us here in the Philippines, we decided to offer the course. Delaying it would further disrupt our majors' lives, not to mention your curricular schedules. Thus, the ones who led in organizing um, this series are a pioneering group of art of 15 students. Again, another bragging right. Most of them are art studies majors who have gone through the many required prerequisites 
that have provided them with foundational knowledge. Most of you went through Art Studies 50, right? Uh, frames and methods of the discipline. A few are newly admitted graduate students. LK is one. And at least one, that's Miguel, is a speech and theater major who is taking the course as an elective. Join me in congratu congratulations, guys. No? You are a pioneering group. Uh, you made art studies history as being the first batch of art stud 143 students and second, the first batch who went through the perils and joys of learning contemporary art on remote, entire remote mode. No? So they valiantly took on the role of organizing, coordinating with speakers, moderating and hosting the sessions. They were running the show and it took a lot of time and effort amidst many other requirements in other classes and their different struggles in the home and in the workplace. It was not a walk in the park, I tell you. Uh, this is like pilot text testing a vaccine. And thanks to them, the trials and errors that we went through, the course will come out stronger in the future. So, you know, guinea pigs, kumbaga, no? Uh, test drive ito, no? First time offered. So maraming kinks and maraming glitches. And thank you for bearing with me on that, no? And taking this journey with me. The guest lecture series is also pivotal in implementing a syllabus which should have been ideally conducted with face-to-face -face encounters with most, if not all, artworks. The class would have gone through many field works, guys. Visit sana tayo ng museums, go around the UP campus, which is rich in sculptures, and even visited artist studios. Sana na-visit na lang natin si Rocky sa kanyang studio, no? But since such was not possible, we instead invited guest speakers coming from diverse backgrounds and practices. So allow me to thank the guests for their time, understanding, and patience to see this process through, particularly Rocky, you know, for this final installment. Thank you very much for your time you know, and patience. We know you are also very busy. To them, we, have, we owe the success of this series and the success of the syllabus. We salute you. So anyway, ito lang yung key themes na nakikita ko no, sa ngayon. No? So collaboration and relationality and art and art making as sites of possibility. So process is very important as we've seen in today's talk. No? But it's also the process of coming together especially with the current situation of separation uh, persisting and continue to persist and will and we hope not no but there you are we think of the uh, process of coming together conversing and seeing the flow where the flow takes us no so parang naging nangyari i, I had a syllabus i had a course pack uh, I had a, a, a plan for this whole thing. But then so many things come in play, you know? So there are also, biglang nagkaroon pala ng certificates, biglang naging PubMat, dati-rate, pang klase lang ito, biglang, ay hindi, i-open natin sa public, yung gano'n, ano? So naging organizing din siya, naging practicum of sorts. So merong uh, tension or balance between uh, a plan and an output and being open to many possibilities along the way. Rocky Kanina was talking about way station. No? And uh, I borrowed the notion of wayfaring from the anthropologist Tim Ingold. No? Wayfaring as a term that refers to the way we inhabit the earth with our lives unfolding, not in static places, but along paths. So, a play as a, a space like the Cordilleras is not supposed to be static. It's not supposed to be some remote thing where nothing ever happens. All right. It's in contact with the outside world. As we proceed along a path, we catch and leave a trail. As we trace our lines of travel, we get caught up with one another, converging in a knot with all the threads or lines connected tightly knit together, becoming a meshwork. That's my illustration there. Delineated by movement beyond it, 
where the trails get caught up with other lines like threads weaving and woving together. We've seen, we've seen this weaving and woving together in the work of Rocky today, you know? The emphasis is not so much the destination or static places, but on the journey along paths uh, where our lines intersect. We think of places as sites of encounter, as flows of movement and relationality, be they in a cafe, a farm, an open space, in a blog, or sessions like this. We saw very clearly, that very clearly, in Wu Manifesto. Uh, and uh, we saw that very clearly as well in uh, the Gantala Press, no? the way they uh, uh, link communities. And we also saw this very clearly in the work of the uh, Bridging the Gap Project, all right? Where they link together faculty from different disciplines to come up with instructional materials, all right? No? So life happens, no? Um, ito na yung sinasabing struggles and lines and intersecting uh, uh, functions, no? Um, for example, you see there a work by Mark Salvatus made out of the vegetables, no? Uh, when they were locked down and uh, the family house became a site of the exhibition. And later on, they acquired the life of their own as in Instagram. We see here the work of uh, Guinevere de Sena, uh, who is uh, an artist from Bacolod, who is also not only an artist in the studio, but also a cultural worker. And we see Wu Manifesto artists linking with um, elementary students no, in Thailand and Gantala Press linking with basic sectors not, like workers and, uh, and all others, no? workers and particularly workers, uh, women workers and farmers. Okay, so uh, possibilities, no? Slow viewing, life happens, no? So, uh, nakita rin natin yung importansya ng archiving and digitizing and new forms of curating. In, in fact, the notion of curation has become less authoritative and less centralized as we see in contemporary art or in the examples that we have seen in the sessions, no? So, important practice yon, no? the better to systematically document and disseminate works and conversations across several lines, no? So back to the mesh work. Farmers and weavers, scientists, philosophers, poets and dancers, among others, no? And finally, art and art making as sites of possibility, the awareness of larger context and focus on that which we can make possible instead of what is impossible and what we cannot or beyond our control. We think, we think of, um, I think I've lost, I've lost uh, the notes, no? We think of uh, other, uh, thinking out of the box, no? Uh, although in the present setup, we, Although feelings are valid in the present setup, we do not give way to despair. But we think of uh, looking at the present situation and thinking about what this situation means for us, for our life, no? And uh, accepting those that we have and those that are possible with gratitude and humility. And instead of giving way to despair, we give way to our notion, our, our, we use our agent uh, to empower ourselves, to imagine, to hope, and to create. So I think that's what our guest speakers uh, uh, taught us in these sessions. And this is also what we taught uh, together, what we learned together in this meshwork of wayfaring people and wayfaring objects and wayfaring possibilities and journeys through life. Ayun lang, thank you so much, uh, LK, for this uh, opportunity to synthesize no? the whole guest speaker series. Again, thank you very much, Rocky, for your time. We hope uh, we can also uh, consult you uh, later on. No? Okay, sige. Sige, LK, uh, uh, over to you. 
Oh, thanks, ma'am. Thank you po for granting our request to give this closing <laughs> remarks. Kasi ano, since DTG ko siya tinanong. <laughs> so, weeks ago. Pero ayun. Ma'am finally ga- caved in. <laughs> so, ayun. Thank you uh, very much, Prof May, for uh, for the very insightful and inspirational recap of our guest lecture series. And thank you ulit, uh, Rocky, for your presentation. And syempre, we... It, this wouldn't be possible without you guys. So thank you all for attending our session. Thank you. Uh-oh. And with that, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. certificates Uh-oh. will be uh, available and recordings, right? Yes, ma'am. And also, we'd like to hear your feedback on what we can improve with our events. So you, you can see on the Zoom chat your survey form, but we will also send it uh, to your email that, you use, that you've used uh, as registration or during registration. Uh-oh. Along with your certificate and also the link to the YouTube recording. So for more art-related talks, please follow our study CP Diliman Facebook page, subscribe to their YouTube channel, and check the Department of Art Studies website that you can see on your screen.